I'm going to give a little example from my boarding facility because it helps me. I, a lot of times people think, and I know Lisa is probably fallen victim to this, that stress means your animal is acting stressed, meaning right, right. pacing, uh, not eating, maybe vomiting, maybe running the walls. I'm going to tell you from my experience from my boarding facility, that is not always the case. I have seen animals who seem there to be okay, and then I'll see blood in their urine. And, and I know they're stressed. If you just think about it from a boarding standpoint, leaving the home, and even though there's a bunch of people around and all of that can be stressful. And so I want to stress that, and I want to know if you guys agree with me, that stress doesn't always mean that your animal is showing signs of stress. Can you guys no, talk a little? It's it, yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to our cats, right? Because our cats, they're predators, but they're also prey. So instinctively, they mask all pain, all stress, things like that. So they are, um, you know, it, usually when you see a stressed out cat, I mean, every, every cat has a different personality, right? But when you see a cat and you're like, oh, wow, my cat is really stressed out, it's usually because they're super stressed out. Right. A bored cat is a stressed cat. Right, right. Yeah. And I think Dr. Marcy Kosky uh, with Feline Behavior Solutions does a really great job of helping us understand that what we see as stress behavior or as anxiety is not how our cats uh, see things at all. Right. So being able to look at it from their perspective and I think understanding that that basic mentality of never showing when they're stressed, when they're um, in pain, that sort of thing is really important because as we get to know our kitties, then we might be able to um, better tell better tell what's going on. Yeah. And sometimes it'll be a couple of different things. It's not always going to be as, I'm using air quotes here, as easy as there being a physical thing that you see, like blood in their urine or yeah. like over grooming or something like that, right. or just aggression. You know, I think aggression is a misunderstood um, symptom of a number of different things. Of but, stress. Right. Right, right. right. If there's something that you really, really think will help a cat with cystitis, can you guys talk about it a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and, and this is funny because when we first started, um, so many, like four years ago, I think when we first started selling this product, um, it's called cat calm and it's, it's a, original. yeah, it's a, very original. Um, it's <laughs> made, of, it's made of 80 different herbs, 21 minerals and seven, seven plant extracts. So it's completely, completely natural. No, you know, no side effects. It's also not a sedative. So it's not something that, you know, like, it's like not. many of these, um, chemical medications, they're going to, you know, make your cat into a different per like they just have a different personality. So about four years ago, one of our uh, customers came to me and she was like, my vet can't figure this out. They're the same situation as with Aria, right? My vet can't figure this out. Um, that my cat just keeps having urinary issues, um, keep going to the vet. There's no, you know, track, uh, urinary tract infection. We don't know what it is and why this keeps happening. And I had just done like a, my, my stu like a study on, or was reading studies on feline idiopathic cystitis. And I was like, have you heard about this? And have you thought about this? And she was like, let me talk to my vet. She went back to her vet and came back. She was like, your vet, my vet said, you were spot on. That's it gotta is. be what this is. Um, so what can we use? And I was like, well then, you know, we're, we don't need to be using all these urinary things as much as we need to be using a calming formula. So she started using cat calm. Um, and she just mixes it in a little bit of, you know, in the food, she's a raw feeder as well. Mixing, uh, mixing the drops into a little bit of water mixed in with the food. Water activates many of the herbs, um, so it so it needs you know a little bit of water in there. And um, I mean, four years later, no more, no more no issues. More yeah, no That's more amazing. cystitis. That's awesome. awesome. that medicine is sick care. Medicine is sick care. Nutrition, Food, is, nutrition healthcare. is healthcare. Nutrition is health care. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's a sign that. right outside of my I store. Um, I love that. Yeah. That. Because it, it, it really, there's, there's, it's two trains of thought, right? You can either treat your animals when they get sick or you can keep them healthy by feeding them nutrition. And so, but nutrition looks different for everybody. Do you, do, what do your kitties eat? Uh, we, we feed a, a raw diet as well to, okay. to all of our cats. So, okay. yeah, and we feed variety. We're very big on, um, you know, not always feeding the same proteins. Uh, they get a lot of uh, novel proteins right now in the in the rotation is actually camel. Um, I have no idea. Rabbit is their I favorite. I didn't know they had camel. <laughs> I, wow. I know. I know, right? That's amazing. So, um, so they, they, eat, uh, they eat very well. Um, but this just goes to show, Lisa, that, you know, 
we're very adamant about the way that we feed our pets, but food isn't always everything. There's so much more when it comes to nutrition and preventative care when it comes to our cats, like stress, yep. right? Um, or vaccines. And like, there's so many other things, chemicals in the household that, that actually affect our cats mm -hmm. that we didn't know. And that we've just yeah. learned along mm -hmm. the, you know, over the past literally five years. Right. Um, right. That chemicals can, like what? contributes to our cats' overall health. Yeah. Wow. What kind of chemicals are you referring to? So like candles, uh, plugins. We were really, really big into Febreze plugins. Yes, and the aerosol were, spray. Yeah, Me too, um, once upon a time. Yeah. Oh. Making it smell yeah. nice. Yeah. Those chemicals yeah. our animals are super sensitive to. So we forget that their entire life is about smelling. That's their, that's their communication. And so when we burn a candle that smells nice to us, it could be triggering something in their brain that is saying something's off, something's wrong. You know, even fire, you light a candle, if there's fire in the house to an animal, that means run. That could be sparking anxiety in your pet, but we don't think about that stuff. And yeah, well, and there's usually like, I'm, I'm really big, especially at this season on the uh, Yankee Seasonal. candles. Yeah. Right. I always, I, every year <laughs> I would stock up, we'd spend way too much money and stock up on those, not knowing that they have paraffins in it and that it's actually toxic to our cats, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, and I tried to justify it for a while. Well, and we've never, I mean, only, okay. We had that one cat with asthma, but <laughs> you know, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it's okay. Yeah. But then when you, when you do the study, when you read the studies and when you see how the these household chemicals are, are really, you know, uh, affecting them, it's yeah. like, we have to, we have to make that decision because before we see something wrong. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important to start like leading from what you're talking about. And when we're talking about anxiety, if an animal is not feeling right within the home, that's going to lead to anxiety, which could lead your pet to cystitis. So I'm gonna ask you guys if you could just define what we're gonna be talking about today. What do you guys know about cystitis? How do you define it for people? Okay, so the, the medical field actually calls it feline idiopathic cystitis. And they call it idiopathic because they don't know where it comes from, right? Basically anything that's an idiopathic disease is like a, um, we don't have the root cause of it. But the majority of these, especially when it comes to our cats, are linked directly to stress. Now, sometimes that's nutritional stress and sometimes that's environmental stress, but always some kind of stress within the body, which usually creates inflammation, sometimes in the bladder, um, sometimes in other areas of the body. But um, feline idiopathic cystitis, all the studies show that um, like over, I think, 80 percent is um, directly related to stress. Right. Thank you.